Uh, it's pretty hard to find an optimistic story to say about Europe, um, which when I listen to your previous discussion and my past, I kind of think maybe it's that bad that we can't think of anything that's really going to be worse than it is. But certainly right now, uh, the only debate in Europe is who's going to be uh, in the bigger recession first uh, here in the UK or on the continent, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, uh, we have the ECB tomorrow going to uh, probably raise rates 75 basis points. Bank of England facing a remarkably superficially, at least, expansive fiscal policy from the incoming trust government, probably going to accelerate rate hikes more. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we don't have the surprising ongoing strength cyclically as, as your latest ISM numbers show just today. Uh, and that's right. before we even get to China, which is looking pretty grim as well, of course. Yeah, it is. Uh, before we get to China, let me come back to you, though, on, you know, more specifically on the energy situation, what the impact yeah. you see. Obviously, consumers in the UK and across the continent will be facing higher bills. You've got this prospect of utilities being in a difficult pinch, perhaps, if they aren't able to get recompense, so to speak, particularly when it comes to higher natural gas prices. What are your expectations, Jim, uh, you know, both on the consumer side and then the industrial side with that prospect as well, that certain manufacturing plants may not be able to go full out? You know, it's, it's so bad that here in the UK for the past month, there's, there's been more and more serious discussion about going back to the days when I first got out of school and going to university, of the, the, when we had things like a three-day working week uh, with enforced closing of factories and uh, when there was a lot of factories in the UK. Um, and that's, that's the kind of mentality that people are having to think about. It, it is truly incredible. However, because of that and because of the colossal increase in gas prices, we're now seeing policymakers uh, consider pretty dramatic things. The UK government tomorrow, uh, after suggesting that they weren't going to give any handouts, uh, appear to be leaking that they're going to come up with a subsidy package, which is on the same magnitude of what they did during COVID to protect employment. And so it, it, we could be close to certain aspects of an inflection point here, particularly in terms of the what it means for headline inflation, because if they go ahead as planned, and Germany has just announced something similar a couple of days ago, it, it, it certainly means the damage to uh, individuals from cost of living increases and therefore inflation won't be as severe as everybody's been talking about until literally yesterday. Um, but at the same time, and what adds to the complication of it, because it involves enormous uh, cost in terms of uh, more fiscal issuance, uh, the UK bond market is increasingly sensitive to all of this, uh, partly because, of course, uh, touching on what I said earlier, the Bank of England will probably accelerate uh, the degree and scale of its rate hikes, a bit like the Fed appears to be threatening. So the markets have got all of that to worry about, too. Everybody. We got, we got Canada later this morning. Some are expecting as much of 100 basis points again on a rate hike. Jim, my question in this environment is, can the U.S. avoid a recession in 2023? Because if you look at the bond market pricing, credit spreads, OIS swaps, not pricing in a recession. And they expect the Fed to stop hiking in March 2023. Is that realistic? I mean, you know, as a guy, am I allowed to say who knows? <laughs> Uh, yes. No. You know, it, it is an absolutely fascinating uh, time. And, you know, these days I have the liberty of trying to keep as open mind as possible. And something I put out on Project Syndicate late last month, I, I find myself, especially talking to you guys a day after this UK policy development, that, that, that it might just well be that the underlying inflationary environments is not as bad as people are talking about. And I listened to your summary of your interview with uh, the CEO of Unilever, and I, I, like, I suspect there's something to what Carl said, that these guys are, are now building on the story of it to try and get bigger mm. profit margins rather than the inflationary pressures. Because if you look at a lot, of, a lot of food prices around the world are actually down sharply from uh, six months ago. 
Uh, and if you take gas out of it, oil prices are, you know, are, are some way off the peak from some months ago too. And crucially, like I keep saying every other time I'm on with you guys, I, I watch yeah. the five-year uh, Michigan inflation expectation survey like a hawk. And that thing isn't budging. In fact, it's come back down to 2.9. And I would have thought the Fed Good. will be watching that as closely, if not more closely, than I do from what I remember right. of how important it is. So hey, it's Jim, not impossible, Jim. Sarah, that the inflation picture might turn. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.